Today is the seventh day in our novena to St. Louis the Ninth, by the grace of God, King of France. And we continue with our Chronicle of the Crusades and the Memoirs of St. Louis the Ninth. Now, yesterday we, um, yesterday we heard of the preparation to board the ship to make pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and the preparation for pilgrimage was made by a pilgrimage. Uh, the nobleman writing this treatise or this um, this memoir noted that he uh, made a pilgrimage in his own place, in his own town, to the holy places, and then they embarked the ship. <clears throat> they sang the Veni Creator, the Veni Creator, uh, for the coming of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, for the beginning of their of their journey, and. Instantly a breeze of wind filled our sails, and soon we made and soon made us lose sight of land, so that we only saw sea and sky, and each day we were at a farther distance from the place from which we had set out. So they set out from the port of Marseille. Okay, now <clears throat> we continue then with our story, and we skip a little ahead, and he says this. I will tell you the first marvel that befell us at sea. It was a great round mountain which we met with about Vespers off Barbary. When we had passed it, we made all the sail we could the whole night, and in the morning we supposed we must have run fifty leagues or more, but we found ourselves again off this large mountain. Now Vespers uh, refers to the time of the evening star. It's dusk. The sky might be still light, but the land or the sea is dark. The first star arrives or appears in the night sky, and that is called the Vesper. Um, and due to that, we call evening prayer Vespers. Okay, so we found that we found ourselves again off this large mountain in the morning. We were, of course, much alarmed and continued to make all the sail we could that day and the following night, but it was all the same. We still had the mountain near at hand. We were more astonished than ever, and thought we had run great risk of our lives. For the sailors told us that the Saracens of Barbary would come and attack us. A very discreet churchman, called the Dean of Maru, came forward and said, Gentlemen, I never remember any distress in our parish, either from too much abundance, or for want of rain, or any other plague. But that God and his mother delivered us from it, and caused everything to happen as it could be wished, when a procession had been made three times with devotion on a Saturday. Now this day was a Saturday, and we instantly began a procession round the masts of the ship. I remember well that I was forced to be supported under my arms, because I was at the time very sick. Immediately afterward we lost sight of this mountain and arrived at Cyprus, the third Saturday, after we had made our procession. Well, there you go. We found on our landing at Cyprus that the good king St. Louis was already there and had laid in provisions in great abundance. Now it has a footnote there. Matthew Paris writes that when the king's army was in want of provision, the Venetians and the inhabitants of some other towns, which he does not name, brought succor, help, assistance. The Emperor Frederick also sent him assistance, for which the king felt so much obliged that he wrote in his favor to the Pope to obtain his absolution. Queen Blanche likewise thanked him for, by her letters and sent him various presents as an acknowledgment to him from France, assuring him that the whole French army was indebted to him for its preservation. Now, Queen Blanche is his mother. All right, let's continue. So we found at Cyprus the, that... The good king, St. Louis, was already there and had laid in provisions in great abundance. You would have taken his cellars at a distance for great houses formed of casks of wine, placed one on the other, which his purveyors had brought two years before and had left in the open fields. In like manner was the wheat, barley, and other grain in large heaps, which from their immense size appeared like mountains, and in truth many would have supposed them such, for the rains which had battered their sides had made the corn grow, so that there was nothing to be seen but green corn. When the army of the king came to move the, remove the grain, in order to its being sent to Egypt, 
and to take off the crust of green corn, they found the corn underneath as fine and fresh as it, as if it had been just threshed. Well, the good king was impatient to set sail, so that if it had not been for his barons and near relations who prevailed on him to wait the arrival of forces that were daily expected, he would have embarked alone or with a very small company. While the king remained in Cyprus, the great Cham or Cham of Tartary sent him an ambassador who paid him many fine compliments. Among others, the Cham of Tartary sent him word that he was ready and at his command to assist him in the conquest of the Holy Land and to deliver Jerusalem from the hands of the Saracens and pagans. The king received this embassy with kindness and in return sent ambassadors to the, to the Cham, to the Cham of Tartary, who were two years bef before they returned. The king of France sent likewise to the Cham a tent in the form of a chapel. It was of fine scarlet cloth, very rich and handsomely made, with the intent to see if he could induce the Cham and his subjects to embrace our faith and religion. And as a further inducement, he had embroidered on the inside of the tent the Annunciation of the Virgin Mother of God with other mysteries of our faith. Two black monks who understood the Saracen language had charge of this tent and to exhort the Tartars and show how they ought to be how they ought to put their belief in God. We remained a long time in and before Damietta, for the king had none in his council who advised him to march further, until his brother the Count de Poitiers, whom the storms had driven, as before mentioned, to Acre, was returned, for he had with him the arriere ban of France. From fear that the Turks might force the camp with their cavalry, the king ordered it to be surrounded with deep ditches, and on their banks there were numerous parties of crossbows and others who watched during the nights. The feast of St. Remy had passed without the army receiving any news from the Count de Poitiers or his men. This alarmed the king greatly, and the army were in much distress, for they began to fear from his not coming that he was either dead or in very great danger. I then recollect, recollected the worthy dean of Maru and told the legate how by means of the three processions which he made us perform when at sea, we were delivered from the great peril, peril we were in, as I have already related. The legate believed what I said and ordered three processions to be proclaimed throughout the army to be put into practice the three following Saturdays. The first procession began at the house of the legate and proceeded to the church of Our Lady in the town of Damietta. This church had been a mosque of the Turks and Saracens, but the legate had consecrated it to the honor of the Mother of God, the glorious Virgin Mary. Thus was it continued for two Saturdays, and each time the legate preached a sermon. The king and the great lords attended, to whom, after they had heard the sermon, the legate gave absolution. Before the third Saturday, the Count de Poitiers arrived with his men, and fortunately for him he did not come earlier, for during the space of the two preceding Saturdays there were such continued storms at sea before Damietta that twelve score vessels, great and small, were wrecked and sunk, and their crews drowned. Had the Count of Poitiers arrived at that time, he would have run great risk of suffering, suffering a similar fate, and I believe it would have been so, if God had not assisted him. There was much joy in the whole army on the arrival of the Count of Poitiers, the king's brother and shortly after the king assembled his barons in council and asked them what route he should pursue, whether to Alexandria or to Babylon. The Count Peter of Brittany, with several other barons, were of opinion that the king should march to Alexandria, because there was a good harbor for boats and vessels to bring provision to the army. But this plan was not approved of by the Count d'Artois, who said he would never march to Alexandria until he should have been at Babylon, which was the seat of empire in Egypt. He added, among other reasons, that whoever wished to kill a snake should begin with the head. To this opinion, the king assented and gave up the former plan. At the beginning of Advent, the king and his whole army began their march toward Babylon, according to the advice given by the Count d'Artois. And we'll stop there. So what have we learned in this 
in this um, in this reading, we have learned that when we are in distress, when something is troublesome, when something needs to be resolved, three processions must be made three Saturdays in a row. That makes complete sense to me. Complete sense. We just finished a great rosary walk today. Seven, just shy of seven miles around the parish boundaries. And what a blessing. I think we have now done 20, it was said we've done 21 uh, processions or 21 rosary walk pilgrimages around the parish boundaries at this point, which is three times seven. Now, if seven is the fullness, is a number of fullness, and uh, we've done seven now three times in honor of the Holy Trinity, well, I would guess something good is going to come of it. Something good comes of it every time we make a rosary walk, and we just entrust that to God and to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, let us pray our litany of St. Louis, King of France, after having prayed the Novena to St. Louis the Ninth, King of France. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. O Holy King St. Louis, worthy son of our Holy Father St. Francis and patron of the Third Order, intercede for me with our Heavenly Father, obtain for me the grace to follow in thy footsteps, be always a dutiful child of St. Francis, and to observe exactly all the days of my life that holy rule which thou loved so ardently and kept so faithfully. Be my guide and protector, so that I may never stray from the path of virtue, but increase daily in holiness and perfection, and finally merit to be numbered among the chosen ones of our seraphic Father in heaven. Amen. O God, who didst bless, who did who didst exalt blessed Louis, thy confessor, from an earthly realm to the glory of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant, we pray thee, that by his merits and intercession we may be made heirs of the King of kings, thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth forever and ever. Amen. Now let us call to mind our intentions, if we have not already done so. And let us pray the litany of St. Louis, King of France, if you would keep among your intentions for our secular government, that St. Louis would intercede for our secular rulers, for the conversion of many souls, for the restoration of Christendom, and for the coming of the reign of Mary. Those would be good intentions to pray for, and all the intentions of all those who are praying this can be asked. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Ghost, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of virgins, pray for us. Saint Louis of France, pray for us. Saint Louis, Shion of devout parents, pray for us. St. Louis, constant protector of the children of God, pray for us. St. Louis, steadfast teacher of piety, pray for us. St. Louis, true model of Christian virtue, pray for us. St. Louis, faithful confessor of the living Christ, pray for us. St. Louis, kingly bearer of humiliations, pray for us. St. Louis, staunch defender of the glorified Christ, pray for us. St. Louis, true martyr of the flesh by mortification, pray for us. St. Louis, detester of worldly pride and honor, pray for us. St. Louis, savior of souls, pray for us. St. Louis, ardent lover of God, pray for us. St. Louis, kind friend of enemies, pray for us. St. Louis, wrapped in prayer to God, pray for us. St. Louis, hope of sinners, pray for us. St. Louis, giver of gifts, pray for us. St. Louis, founder of charitable institutions for the afflicted, pray for us. St. Louis, generous giver of alms, pray for us. St. Louis, lavish dispenser of riches, pray for us. St. Louis, guard of the holy places of pilgrimage, pray for us. St. Louis, detester of immoderate people, pray for us. St. Louis, protector of widows and orphans, pray for us. St. Louis, defender of the sepulcher of our Lord Jesus Christ, pray for us. 
Saint Louis victor over the Saracens, pray for us. Saint Louis, protector of those in pagan slavery, pray for us. Saint Louis, converter of unbelievers to the Christian faith, pray for us. Saint Louis, visitor of hospitals and dispenser of favors to the infirm, pray for us. Saint Louis, healer of the sick, pray for us. Saint Louis, intercessor and patron of the French king, pray for us. Saint Louis, from whom those who flee to thee obtain the infallible help of God, pray for us. Saint Louis, at whose request diverse diseases are miraculously cured, pray for us. Lamb of God, who take us away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who take us away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who take us away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father, Hail Mary, full of grace. Pray for us, Saint Louis, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, King of Kings, Jesus Christ, who didst love Saint Louis and didst lead him into the heavenly kingdom, grant that by his intercession and good works we may participate in his glory for all eternity, who livest and reignest, world without end. Amen. Nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, join me tomorrow for day eight in our novena to St. Louis by the grace of God, King of France. Please subscribe to this video channel. Like this video. Share it. Hit the bell to be notified of future videos. And don't miss a day of prayer with us.